Hello, life mates, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Arnie's class and another episode. And in today's episode, we're going to talk about mindset. I'm very excited about this topic. Our mind is very powerful, and our mindset is very important. And some people they even say that mindset is everything. Your mindset is actually a set of your beliefs, and your mindset affects your feelings, and your feelings affect your behaviors. It's like a cycle. I don't think that mindset is totally separated from your feelings and your actions, or your feelings is you are totally separated from your mindset and actions. I believe these three are are equally important. But of course, if you will ask me which one comes comes first, I believe it's your mindset. Our mind is very powerful, and our mindset is very important. Some people say mindset is everything. Mindset is a set of your beliefs that shape how you make sense of your world. And your mindset affects how you feel and how you behave. According to Dr. Carol Dweck, and this is a very good book about growth mindset, there are actually two basic mindset, fixed mindset and growth mindset. And what I really like about the book or the concept of growth mindset is the power of yet. So every time someone asks you and your answer is no, instead of saying no to that, for example, can you speak Spanish? Instead of saying no, you can just say not yet. It means you're giving yourself an opportunity that you can actually learn the language. Every time you use that yet, it means you're allowing yourself to have that opportunity to grow. Because it means you're you're you have that belief that I can learn that. I can do that. With opportunities and the right mindset, you can learn. You can do whatever you think you can. A strong mindset is very important, especially now with this pandemic. Depression is real. And your mindset can actually make you survive, can make you be resilient. Because a strong mindset is a combination of a lot of things. Many, many things like awareness, your focus, your resiliency. Some people, they just focus and think of negative things instead of positive things. Although it's very natural for us to focus on the negative things rather than the positive things, but you have the power to change that. And there are many ways to make our mindset strong. Like for example, if you have some time wherein you're alone and you have nothing to do and you, instead of focusing on thinking about the negative things that happened or that could happen, why don't you just focus on the positive things that happened in the past and those positive things that can possibly possibly happen in your future or even in your present time. Time to think of those happy moments and I believe meditation can really help people to have very strong mindset. You don't have to meditate for 30 minutes, one hour, just meditate even one minute each day. It will help you a lot to clear your thoughts. And we do meditation not because we want to be good in meditation. We mod- meditate because we want to be good in life. Sometimes you just have to stop and reflect on what are your dominating thoughts. With my special guest, we are going to talk more about mindset. And someone says that our mind is a powerful servant or a dangerous master. So what kind of mindset, mindset do you have? Ladies and gentlemen, listen and learn. Hello, light mates. And in this episode, I have a very special guest. And my special guest for this episode is a certified interactive hypnotherapist, a mindset coach, and an NLP trainer. He helps people to be successful, happy, and prosperous. And he works with more than 300 plus one-on-one clients in not only one country, in Thailand, Vietnam, and Myanmar. Please welcome my very special guest, Nenad Popadik. Hi, Nenad. Hi, Ari. Hi, very good to, to be here. I'm, I'm grateful to be, uh, to be here with you today. Yes, I'm very happy that you said yes to my invitation. I'm very nice. excited because we're going to talk about 
a very interesting topic, which is mindset. Yes. Then I have a lot of questions, so I better start. <laughs> Let's do it. I'm, I'm, I'm ready. Yes. Nena, if someone asks you what is mindset, how do you give a definition or how do you answer that question? It's a very good question. I think mindset can mean a lot of things to a lot of people. If I had to keep it very simple, I would say it's just the sum total of your thoughts, your beliefs, your attitudes, and your, your feelings, pretty much. And all of these put together creates what we call you know, the mindset. And your mindset then affects and impacts your perception in life, what you do, how you react, your attitudes, your behaviors, uh, and so on. See. And how long have you been working as a mindset coach? Since end of 2015, so coming uh, six years now. Wow, been a long yeah. time. And with that <laughs> amount of, of time that you've been working with your clients, what is the usual or common, will I say, problems or challenges of people in terms of mindset? Yes. Um, you know, what's very interesting is that people have different stories, but the patterns are often similar. It's similar. And once you start to understand the mechanics of the mind, you can kind of see patterns in people. You have to be you know, blind not to see similar patterns occurring in, in um, similar people. Very often, most often, it comes down to the self-image. What I call the self-image is basically not only uh, like physically, how we see ourselves physically, but also uh, all those beliefs and identity and personality that we have created for ourselves. You know, every time... We label ourselves as, you know, I am this or I am that. I'm not enough of this. I'm too much of that. We create this identity. Yeah. And based on how we see ourselves, we act, you know, we present ourselves in the world and we either limit ourselves sometimes in some area and maybe not in others, but it deeply affects pretty much everything we do. And so, for example, if you think that you're fat and ugly, Right? Or if you believe certain things that you're not good enough or that you're not smart enough or that you're a slow learner or that because of certain things that happen to you, it means this and that. You can see how clearly this will affect the person and what they do later on in their life because our beliefs control who we are and what we do, our perception and our decisions and then you know, what we do. And one of the deepest needs that we have as, as people is the need to remain consistent with how we see ourselves. And that, that's why, you know, when, when people start to shift those beliefs or shift the perception of themselves, it not only, you know, change so much of their behaviors, but it also allows them to move into something different. So very often to answer your question in a simple word is it comes down to shifting their self-image. I'm sure you've worked with a lot of clients with very successful results in changing yes. their self-beliefs or self-image. How long does it take in general? I know it, it, it's not the same from one person to another. But in general, Nenad, how long does it take for a person to change that kind of mindset? Well, like you said, there's not a one number, right? But if I had to give, a, I like to work over a period of six weeks. Okay, I think that six weeks is a beautiful time frame. Because a lot of things can happen between six weeks. You know, uh, that, that means you know, one session a week for six weeks. It's the, the work is, you know, in a session and then in between the session, there's tasking, there's things they have to do, there's exercises that need to take place, there's, you know, things that will shift that mindset and consolidate what we do. So after a period of six weeks, usually people not only, uh, not only they feel better, they feel different, but they start to see results. You know, when you start to see concrete, you know, results and experiences of what you've been through, it consolidates everything. When we say six weeks, does it mean that it's on a like, daily basis that they see you or it's as, like a twice or three times a week or what's the schedule like? It's usually one time a week for 90 minutes. So over six weeks, that will be six sessions of 90 minutes. Six weeks, 90 minutes, like one and a half hours. Per week, per, pretty much, yes. Yes. And how's the result? I mean, the record of your, the, the success result. Yes. For example, like 80%, 90%. <laughs> Uh, well, it, it's hard to, uh, you know, put a, a number or something like that because everybody's getting results. Not everybody's getting the same result because not everybody's invested in the same way. Not everybody 
uh, you know, is, is after the same result either. Agree. You know, Agree. so it's very difficult to, to you know, uh, to, to some people that just want to feel you know, more comfortable or some people just want to overcome some form of social anxiety. Uh, you know, I do sometimes stop smoking also, you know. So, you know, how do you measure those things? Everybody's getting some form of results. Um, but it's hard for me to tell you, uh, or it's 90, 80. It doesn't make much sense to me. But did you experience wherein you work with a client and nothing works? I mean, there was no result after after all the series of sessions and still the same, the image, the beliefs, the mindset is still the same. It happens uh, very rarely, but it happens. Yes. And, you know, usually before I start working with our, with the clients, you know, we, we chat, we have a, you know, a, a long discussion and we just try to see if there's a good fit because obviously uh, I'm not a guru or a magician. I will not tap on the person <laughs> and it'll be fixed. Yeah. It's uh, something we do together. And if the person, you know, is not committed, they're not doing what they're supposed to do, or they're resisting the process, there's nothing much I can do, right? So it really comes back to how involved is the person in what they want. And I had experiences in the past where the person, uh, they had more benefits for staying the way they were than for changing. What are some of the benefits? Well, you know, sometimes they're getting attention. They're getting some form of social attention or some form of like uh, order form of benefits that perpetuate the situation they're in, even though they don't like it, but they're attached to what that means and what they're getting, if, if that makes sense. It, it's more, more, more commonly, it's called a secondary benefit. And they're already attached to it. They're attached and they're not really, you know, they, I usually they say they, they want to want to change, but they're not there yet, if that means. So it happens usually... Uh, uh, pretty rare, but it, it would happen if, you know, I didn't see that, you know, pre-interview kind of thing. And, and if that's the case, you know, uh, I usually uh, just tell them, you know, early on, and then we, we find, uh, you know, what's the best thing to do moving forward, because uh, I'm not here to wait, waste anybody's time, or, you know, uh, that's, that's not why I do what I do. Agree, agree. Of course, we are in a very challenging situation at the moment because of yes. COVID-19. Yes. Nenad, what other problems or challenges in terms of mindset, instead of mindset, that arises because of COVID situation among your clients or what you have observed with the people? There are many, many, uh, many, because everybody takes it very differently based on you know, the, where they are, in which country. You know, I have some clients in Australia who right now have a very tough lockdown, you know, for example, in Sydney, and uh, it's, it's when they cannot go to work and then they're stuck at home and then there's a financial situation and then there's all those uncertainty. And I think this is really the, the one word here is uncertainty. And it comes down to how do I adapt to this when I have no idea what's coming next? You know, some people also are isolated, so they start to feel lonely. You know, the lack of uh, human connection, interaction, their daily routine, going to the gym and all those things. They, have done, they don't have access to that anymore. And again, it creates that, uh, you know, like uh, it drains you mentally, physically, emotionally. And you get to that point where you don't really know what or how to handle it. And, you know, all that uncertainty. And then if you look at around us, there's so many mis, you know, crossed, uh, you know, you don't know what you believe. What is good, exactly. what is right, who's true. You, there's so much noise and you just don't know anymore. And it's been so long that some, you know, the, the uncertainty really can take a toll on people. So I think if I had to really generalize it, it would be like, you know, how do they adapt to the situation and how can they deal in terms of resilience to what's happening? And those who, you know, tend to thrive and adapt very well, um, you know, seems to be like having an easier time. But those who resist the change seems to, you know, struggle a little bit more. I see. Yeah. You mentioned about resilience. And nowadays, it's a very common word that you hear yeah. of everyone. Everyone's talking about be resilient. Let's talk about resilience. Nenad, what can you say about those people like who are really very weak, with very low self-esteem, those who are actually experiencing all those kind of negative things in their lives? 
how can we help them to become resilient? It's a very good question. It's the first thing is to uh, accept what's happening. You know, the, the challenge is that we that mostly we have is that we never really taught how to deal with uh, our emotions, how to deal with uh, you know that kind of stress. So we don't know what to do. So uh, we we go and we cope like to Netflix, to drinking, to you know uh, endlessly scrolling down on social media, and we we don't address the root cause of what's happening. We address the symptoms. Exactly. And this yes. perpetuates and gets you know heavier and. So I think the, the first step would be to be like, okay, uh, well, you know, I'm anxious or this is happening. I, I, I'm not doing too well. I, I got to shift something. I got to do something. And for a lot of people, this is difficult because that, for them, that presupposes, you know, uh, weakness. You know, Agreed. weakness. Yes. And that brings shame and that brings guilt and that brings like uh, the ego is really much against that thing. And when you get in that place where you you... And this is a trap. The, the, the big trap is that you pretend you're fine and you, you create this facade of like everything goes well, but deep down you're not going well. And so even people who are close to you are maybe not even aware of what's happening. And so then you, you just keep on coping to you know, pretend and remain consistent with this. See. But it doesn't lead to anything productive because again, you're not dealing with really the cause. And so how can we help those people? Well, uh, you know, I share a lot of uh, YouTube videos, articles, posts. I try to educate people. That's, that's one thing I'm trying to do. So to get them to think differently, to get them to understand that there's something they can do. They're not powerless. They can start small. They can make a small little shift. They can, you know, uh, do small little exercises that can then, you know, one step at a time really make a shift. So that, that's what I think what we can do is, is to tell people that they have a choice, they have possibility, even if, even if it's hard to believe right now, because they might be, I don't know, like really depressed or something, but it's possible. And then trying to educate those people, because I, I truly believe that, you know, knowledge changes um, situations in certain ways, because when you don't know, you don't know. Correct. So once you, once you start to know, once you start to understand, and then when you can get to the point where you have the experience, that's when every, everything changes. But at first, it usually starts with some form of knowledge. So if you have a friend or something that's, that's struggling, you know, it's, it might be just listening, uh, sharing information, sharing something that maybe you do that could help them, and, and that could be the first step. So the first step is acceptance. Yes. They really have to accept the situation that where they are in at the moment. Correct. I see. But any recommendation on an exercise that they can do on a daily basis in order for them, yes, for example, yes, I already accepted that I'm this is the situation. I don't have a job at the moment. I'm unemployed. I'm alone. My family is away. I'm single. No relationship. Friends are very far. Things like that. What exercise they can do to to really become resilient each day in their lives? It's a good question. Um, the first thing that came to my mind is uh, something I talk a lot, uh, 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 I give the task a lot to all my clients, is gratitude. Uh, I have uh, my gratitude uh, little booklet, right? And every, every morning for the last two years, I, I write a, a page of things I'm grateful for in the morning. Why? Because you got to take control of how you think. If, if you're being run by automatic thoughts, unconscious thoughts all day long that are mostly negative, you're going to perpetuate the same feeling because how you think is how you feel. Correct. And then you're going to yes. act based on how you feel. And it clouds your perception of life, of yourself, of everything. And when you have a negative perception of, of the world or a pessimistic perception of the world, it's like, imagine you have a sunset, right? And you're looking through the window, but all you can see is the dirt on the window. You don't see the beautiful sunset. That's, you know, that's, that, that's what the kind of lens that many people have. So gratitude, what gratitude does is that it gets you to think differently. It gets you to ask yourself the question, what do I have right now that I can be grateful for? Well, I'm healthy. I have technology, I have possibilities, I have food, I have shelter, I have uh, things I can do, I have, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, a table, a home, uh, you know, all these things, right? Yeah. 
So it also allows you to realize all the things you've been taking for granted. But what the, the main gift in gratitude is that when you start to feel grateful, you're not afraid at the same time. You cannot be you know, uh, grateful and afraid at the same time. Correct. Yes, that's not possible, I think. <laughs> so, so you're breaking that, that um, ongoing uh, spiral that maybe people are constantly in from when they wake up, when they go to bed. So you're consciously deciding, I'm going to start the day being grateful. Mm-hmm. And uh, when you start to do that daily as a habit and you condition your mind, your minds will start to look for things to be grateful for. It will also start to shift your perspective. It will start to shift how you think. It will start to you know, shift how you see yourself. And gradually, your energy change. And if you want to change your life, you need to change your energy. Because if you're in a low state of energy, the only thing that's going to come out of it is something that is equal to your, to your energy. It's, it's very difficult for you to be, you know, if you feel like a three or a four out of 10, you, you're not going to get eight or nine out of 10 results. Because everything you bring uh, it comes from that, from that place. And we are the cause of our experiences. You know? So we have to, like I say, accept and take responsibility. So starting with gratitude is something that costs nothing. It's something that takes very little amount of time. And that I highly recommend everybody uh, to do. You know, take five minutes, write down 10 things you can be grateful for and really feel it, appreciate it, and see what happens, how you feel. I totally agree with that. Nenad, actually, I also have my gratitude journal and I've been oh, doing nice. it. Yes, I've been doing it for, I think, four or five years now. Nice. Yeah, and the last statement on a daily basis is I write what my day will be the following day. I already make the decision that tomorrow is going to be an amazing day. Tomorrow is going to be a grateful day. And I totally agree with you. Gratitude journal really helps. Really, really yes. helps. How long have you been doing it, Nenad? For over two years now. Great, great yes. to hear that. Yes. Okay. You mentioned about you're an interactive hypnotherapist. Yes. That, is this something that you can do when you work with clients in terms of mindset? Of course. Yeah. Hypnotherapy is, uh, it is two ways people react when I tell them I'm a hypnotherapist. Either they become very interested like, wow, what is so cool? What are you doing? What is it, right? You know? Yeah, I want to know. I want to know. <laughs> yeah. Or they take a step back and they're like, Phew. you know, they, they become, uh, uh, you know, anxious or afraid a little bit kind of thing. And that's because there's so much misconception. You know, you see, you watch Hollywood movies and, you know, people fall asleep in seconds and whatnot. And, <laughs> yeah. and you know, it's, it's, it's great, but it's so far out from reality. It, it has nothing to do with that. Simply put, um, Hypnotherapy creates a, a, a state of trance that is a natural occurring thing that everybody goes through every day, multiple times a day. So in scientific words, basically, if we were to measure your brain waves with an EEG, we could measure the activity. Yes. So right now we are very engaged. So that's what we call beta, normal, awake, you know, quite active. When you're stressed up, you go in high beta, which is super active. Now, when you relax a little bit when you daydream or when you walk in the park or you watch a sunset, your brain automatically slow down in alpha. That's the, uh, when you're in flow state. We call that the flow state, the daydreaming state. So it's really, really nice. If you relax still and you're still conscious, maybe you're getting a massage or you're watching TV or just before falling asleep or when you're meditating, you go in a theta, so it's slower. And then you fall asleep, it's delta, it's very slow, right? So Hypnotherapy, what it does is that it helps the person relax and go into alpha or theta. What that does and the purpose of doing that is because it gives us access to what is called the subconscious mind. What is the subconscious mind? Is that part of the mind that is, you know, uh, in charge of our memory, in charge of our body, in charge of our self-image, in charge of all those things. And when we access the part of the mind, we can, you know, make shifts in, in our mindset, in our beliefs, in past experiences or you know, release certain things that, that are holding us back. And that's the power of hypnotherapy is that it can create, it can accelerate that, that result through that process. Okay. So it really helps all people or only some people? Are, because not, we always say there's no one technique or one therapy that can be used to all. Yes. 
if you will say between hypnotherapy and NLP, because you are both an NLP trainer and at the same time an interactive hypnotherapist, yes. if, if you compare the two, how will you compare or how will you differentiate them? You know, NLP is interesting because a lot of the NLP tool has been uh, modeled, uh, meaning created based on uh, hypnotherapy. So, you know, studying some of the highly famous past hypnotherapists, Milton Erickson and Ernest Rossi and things like that. So a lot of the NLP tools are creating also a state of trance, which is a lighter state of trance. You know, today when you have all the guided visualization, guided meditation, that's also a hypnotic process. It's labeled differently. But it's also, you know, when you close your eyes and you daydream, you're also uh, hypnotizing yourself. You know, so hypnotherapy is something everybody does every day, all the time. It's just the way the, the mind works. So when you go to see someone and they help you in the process, you're just, uh, you know, having, uh, you know, maybe a deeper access or more guided access and, uh, to, to, to that thing. So yes, hypnotherapy works for everybody. It, it, it works because it's just the way the, the mind works automatically. You know, here's the thing. When you go to bed at night, right? And just before you fall asleep, you feel usually like quite sleepy, right? In that state, this is when you are literally the most suggestible to new information. So it's like, imagine that your subconscious mind is wide open to receive new information. So if you wanted to create a new mindset, this would be an ideal time. Before, okay. go, before you sleep, right? Yeah, as you, you, you go to bed and that time between like the moment you step in bed and the moment you fall asleep. But what do most people do? They either scroll on Facebook, watch dumb videos. <laughs> they absorb, agree, yes. You know, the news, whatever, like mindless, numb information that are, you know, absorbed. The mind absorbs everything, whatever you see it. Or they think about all the crappy things they have to do tomorrow at work and how stressful they are. Or they think about everything that didn't go wrong today. Very few people are actually consciously, like you said, being grateful for how awesome tomorrow is going to be. Correct. Yes. And that is an act of creating consciously, uh, you know, the future now by consciously telling yourself, you know what, tomorrow I'm going to have a fantastic day. And you can even close your eyes and imagine for a few minutes you know, the, the, the perfect outcome that you want, maybe in your meeting, in your, in your podcast, in, in whatever. And that's one way to, you know, program yourself, program your mindset. So we all have these windows that, you know, we can use to hypnotize ourselves and de-hypnotize from the, the, the trends we're already in. Because a lot of my work is, is not hypnotizing people, it's de-hypnotize them from what they believe. That, oh, I see. Yes. You know what I mean? They believe that they're not good enough. They believe that uh, because of this and that, they cannot achieve the dream, that they'll never achieve the kind of success they want. And they, they kind of surrender and they become a victim of those, of, of, of those things. But in reality, those are just, you know, uh, beliefs that became fact for them. But they, can, they are always more than that. And when they awaken to think greater than, you know, about themselves and about life, they kind of awake, they become awake to something else. And that's what opens possibilities. And I think that this, this is the most important part of my job, awakening people to see themselves differently. And then you start to have new, new possibilities. So uh, I know I'm off your question here, but um, like I said, you know, everybody's on a different journey. So I agree, everybody, you know, based on where they are, what they need, they usually find exactly what they need. Right, yes. uh, and that's fine. That, I think that's beautiful. So, how does NLP help for for the mindset? I know some of the tools and techniques, but of course, from someone like you as an NLP trainer, what can you say about that? Those techniques and maybe simple tools that they can use as well. Yes. So, I think the greatest gift that NLP has done is they really put together a lot of knowledge, a lot of information about the mechanics of the mind how words, how language, how the pictures we create in our mind affects us, how we feel and what we do. And why it's a gift, and I think why it's the greatest gift is because we never taught this at school. Our parents don't know, so that we're never being taught. And like I said earlier, when you don't know, you don't know. Correct. So I think 
uh, those tools that NLB brings creates a lot of self-awareness. And you know, there, there's a lot of tools in NLP that that, uh, in, that really implement um, creating pictures in your mind and getting clarity about what you want. So for example, it's like, okay, uh, asking yourself better questions to get better answers. You know, so for example, if you are in a tough situation um, uh, and you, you can ask yourself certain questions, we call this a reframe, to turn uh, a situation that we perceive negatively. To become positive. To become positive. Because it's all based on context uh, affect our perception. So let's say you have an argument with your girlfriend, right? I don't know, something's happening with your girlfriend or boyfriend and you're pissed off. You're like, oh my God, they always do that. <laughs> you know, they always <laughs> okay. do that. <laughs> And you, you could ask, you know, okay, so, you know, is this true? Are they always doing this? Is this, uh, you know, does that mean they don't love me? Or are they just having a difficult day? Is that something I did that contributed to that? Is this even important? Does it even matter? You know, what, what's the good, what's, what's good about this situation? And when you start to ask yourself this question, you're, you're getting new informations. And then you start to shift your perspective and you start to feel different. New and better information. Well, if you, if you ask yourself good questions, you get good, uh, good <laughs> So it good depends on the questions. <laughs> yeah, because if you ask her, uh, why is she always doing this? You're going to get uh, some, uh, some interesting answers. Eh? <laughs> sure. You know what I mean? Uh, yes. Not, we're yes. not going to help you. But it comes back to that awareness of, are you aware of what's happening? Or is it just happening? And you're like, you know, like riding a wild horse and you don't know where it's taking you. So NLP gives you tools like this that, that can help you uh, take control of that wild horse and be like, no, oh, no, we, we've done enough of this. <laughs> you know, let's go somewhere else. Nena, let me just ask about, you, when you mentioned about before going to, like when, before you sleep, the time that actually it's the best time to give suggestion to yourselves because your subconscious mind is very open and it's how can we do it like in a practical way for example like for people out there listening to us right now so what do you suggest they do during that time very simple uh, the first thing is keep it simple <laughs> there is no perfect technique right right or wrong this is you're already overthinking things uh, uh, there's no way you know keep it simple in everything you do you want to you wanna process, uh, let me give you a process. You're, you're in bed, you know, uh, just sit you know, in a situation where, where you won't fall asleep. I ideally give yourself five minutes before you fall asleep. And then ask yourself, you know, maybe you have a goal. What do I want? Maybe you have a goal to, to lose weight. Maybe you have a goal to get promoted. Maybe you want to, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, go on a holiday or do certain things, be more confident in certain situations. So work on one thing. And then start to visualize, imagine that you already achieved that thing. Yeah. For example, if you want to lose a, a, a few you know, kg or just feel healthier or feel better, imagine a scene that implies it's already done and you're just leaving it. So maybe you are on the beach and you're wearing that, that you know, bikini or... Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know, right? Yeah. And, and you just feel great. You feel healthy. You feel fresh. You feel... Uh, you feel whatever you want to feel. Or maybe you are, you know, you go on a date and usually you're anxious and this time you're, you're in the date and it's going very well and you're laughing, you feel confident and you, you're behaving that way that you always wanted to behave. So you can program yourself by, in your imagination, already behaving the way you want to behave, already having the things you want to have because your mind doesn't know the difference between imagination and reality. Correct, yes. Yes. And so whatever you imagine, especially when in that moment when you're highly suggestible and you feel, feeling is, is, the, feeling is the secret. Feeling is, is the language that communicates uh, with our subconscious mind. So when you can become, uh, what's the word, um, present and involved emotionally in that scene, that's when you know, uh, you know the seed is planted, so to say. I see. Wow. And that's it. Then you can just fall asleep. Very simple. Very simple. It's very simple. And of course, is it a one-time thing and then I'm done and I can go back to uh, thinking and, and you know, uh, giving myself a numb, dumb information? 
well, that's your choice. Exactly. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. Each night, each day, you have a choice of what you choose to give yourself in terms of your mind. Some things are adding, some things are neutral, some things are taking away from you. So my guess is, you know, keep it a habit. Keep it a habit of, of taking those five, 10 minutes in the evening to think of something positive, seeing your life positively, having already the things you want. And you'll be surprised the good thing that will happen. Nice. Yes. Listeners out there, do it tonight. Do it do every it day. Consistency is the key. <laughs> yeah, repetition, consistency. Uh, you know, one step a day will take you a long way. With your experiences, what is the greatest lesson that you've learned from all your clients or all the people you've met, not only your clients, but maybe your friends, in terms of mindset, Nenad, what's the greatest lesson there that made you like, wow, this is it? It's a huge question. <laughs> <laughs> it is a huge question. You know, from, from my own personal experience, I would say that, uh, you know, I would say that I have a few, but I think they're all kind of similar. I would say it's, it's, you know, you are where you are in life because of who you are. I think this is the greatest uh, and honest lesson because it invites you to reflect on, on, on yourself and, and take responsibility for where you are. And the, the beauty, and it comes back to that self-image, to our, you know, your, your state of consciousness is always creating your reality. I'm a strong believer, you know, I like to study quantum physics and, and, and those and those subjects. And we know, I know that we know we, we, we have measurement, we have studies now that, that shows that we are always interacting with this quantum field, right? Yes. And it's based on it's based on what? It's based on our state of consciousness that we occupy most often. Like another word for that is you know our self-image. And so we create in our life the things, the experiences, the people, the, 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 the situations that we create in our life is something we created. So when you can take responsibility for that and to know that you are always bigger than what you think you are right now. Wow, I like I think, that. Yes, I think this is the greatest, most liberating proof. The only challenge is that it can be very difficult to think greater because you're so involved in what you know now and you have no reference for something else. It's you, I can't even imagine kind of thing. Yes. You know, there's this scene in Star Wars uh, that I find is, is so amazing when Yoda is training Luke in, in, in Dagobah. I don't know if you know Star Wars or not, but... <laughs> I know Luke that and, movie. <laughs> yeah, well, and it's, you know, he's training Luke and then he's like, uh, he's trying to use the force, right? And he's getting some form of result and then he's like, this is not working and whatever. And then Yoda is pulling out that big uh, um, ship from the water. And Luke says, I don't believe it. Right? And he says, that is why you fail. Because you don't believe it. And if you think in your life, you know, when you tell people, you know, how would your life be if you, if you already were the kind of life you wanted to have? Most people don't even know what kind of life they want. Exactly. They don't even know. <laughs> they don't even know. They only know the kind of life they don't want. And that's all they focused on. And what you focus on expand. And it's, it's, it's a paradox because yes. they try to move away from it. But all they do is, you know, energizing it. So you have no clarity on what you want, meaning you have no picture in your mind, meaning, you know, if you, had, if you don't have a conscious direction for your future, you'll be repeating your past on autopilot. The same pattern over and over same again. Same pattern. Because your, your mind, like I said, is it, just like a GPS. And if you don't have a clear direction, it's just going to drive, you know, like, a, like the wild horse I told you about earlier, just wherever it wants, yes. wherever it's, it's been programmed to do. Yes. The same, so, I think, sorry, Nena. Yeah. I just want to say about the, because you mentioned about Star Wars and yes. you made me remember about the scene in, I think it's Alice in Wonderland. Remember the cat when Alice asks, which way should I take? And then the cat, where do you want to go? And mm. then she, Alice just said that it doesn't matter because she didn't have that clear direction where she really wants to yes. go. No clear goals. 
you made me yes. rem- remember that movie, that a particular <laughs> scene. Yes, yes. Sorry, Nana, you're saying. Yeah, I think you 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 summed it up perfectly. Uh, having a direction and and being able to think greater ahead of time is a gift. It's a gift that our le- greatest leaders and inventors have always had. You know, people who invented uh, the most amazing things were able to believe that it was possible, even when everybody was telling them it's delusional. You know, uh, and <laughs> yeah. it's true. Like, how could you, are you going to call someone on your mobile phone with that has no wire on the other side of the planet for free? You know, yes. uh, you know th- there was a time when this was just madness. But there was people who believed that that's possible and they, they, they find a way to make it. And now look where we are. <laughs> look where we are. You know, we're on Zoom. <laughs> yes, Make correct. There's one, one, one concept that I can hear nowadays, very often than before, imposter syndrome. Mm. Nenad, what can you say about this? I think it's, I know it's related to self-image and your self-belief, but I don't know why all of a sudden I can hear a lot of people talking about this. Yes, it's a very good question. And like you said, it's, you know, the, the reason why they feel like an imposter is because the way they, they want to act or the way they want to be is not how they know themselves to be. You know what I mean? It's something new. When I became a coach uh, you know, five, six years ago, I felt like an imposter. I felt like, you know, who am I to be a coach? Who am I to help people? You know, yes. uh, you know I, I came from uh, um, being a scuba diver instructor. And I became a coach. It's a big, different <laughs> self-image, right? Yes. And when you move into something new and your, 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 your old paradigm, your self-image is trying to pull you back because that's not who I am. So it feels foreign. And then people will tell you, this is not who I am. You've ever, you've ever heard that? Yes, many it's, times. It's not me. It's not yeah. me. But who are you? And when did you decide that you are that person? Who told you? That's an even better question. Who told you, right? And when? Correct. Yes. And but uh, you know those are those are those things. So yes, imposter is is a good. It can be a good thing because it means that usually people are moving in a particular direction. So it's it's usually a good thing. The, the stepping in the in the uncomfort in, out of the comfort zone, and one of the things they can do to move out of this is you know that exercise we talked about earlier, is to embody that identity before they go to bed. You know, for example, if they want to be a, a coach, I don't know, they can, you know, create scenes where they're working with clients and they truly feel that they are a successful coach or, you know, they're, they're really making a, an impact in people's life. That will help bridge that gap. Yes. You be, if you believe, it, it, it's possible. Everything is possible if you believe. I think our mind is very powerful. Very much so, you know, and uh, I, I don't know if, uh, I, I like to... Uh, quote this Bible quote. I know it's a bit cheesy, but it says, um, you know how people say seeing is believing? But in, in reality, is when you, when you believe it, you will see it. Very well said. Yes, totally agree. And, yes. and, and that's why, you know, that quote in the Bible says, you, we don't walk by sight, we walk by, by faith. Correct. Yes. That's why I think people, they never see because they never believe. <laughs> <laughs> They're yeah. waiting for to see first before they believe. And and you know this is uh, it's is exactly that. You know we we all of everything around us reminds us of who we are. It's difficult to think of yourself uh, successful if you're unemployed, right? So you're constantly reminded by your environment, by your friend, by all those associations you created. Uh, uh, you know with time of who you are. And so when you don't have the knowledge, when you don't have you know, tools or when you don't have the support to be able to, to you know, shift your self-image and start to see that, okay, what I have right now, my environment will not control how I think. And I can start to think greater, even though I don't see it right now, doesn't mean it's not real. Correct. Because yes. I know there's going to be a period of time between where I am and where I want to be. And I got to be okay with that period of time. Agree. And, you know, uh, 
you we you know another quote of the Bible is you know you gotta call for things that are not as though they are. And you know I like to see the Bible as a psychological book because it tells you a lot about you know how you need to think greater and how you need to believe in yourself first and, and all those things. A lot of lessons we can learn from the Bible. Yeah, and and you know all the uh, you know uh, uh, scriptures like that, and you know they they always telling us the same things in different ways. Yes, yes. But if you you're going to give an advice again with your knowledge, yes. experience, qualification, if you're going to give an advice, especially to the young ones nowadays, especially those millennials, in terms of mindset, Nenad. What advice will you give them? Um, apply what you learn in this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think we gave a lot of uh, good information. You know, at the end of the day, and uh, this is a very interesting question. Is you know, there's so much information out there. Yes, I don't need to give people advice. I, I like to give them invitations because th- you can watch anything. You can learn anything on YouTube almost today or google it or you know wikipedia or, or buy a course for a good price but the question is what are you going to do with it to, in this podcast alone uh, you know i can count at least two practical exercises that i gave people but it's worthless if you don't apply it it's worthless if you just apply it one day and the reason why most people get hung up is They all, you know, and this is something I see more and more is that people are drowning in information and they're not executing on it. They just keep on getting all the information, but doing nothing. Doing nothing. And it becomes confusing because one person says this, the other person says that and this, and then there's, you know, because everybody share from their own experience and what worked for them. And you have no experience of, of your own. And, right, and you're just trying to figure it out. But that's just fear. It's fear and, and you know, the, it gives you this fake feeling of like progress. I'm learning, I'm growing, I'm, you know, I'm doing all those things. But in reality, information will only take you so far. But the application, you know, will really change everything for you. Yes. Actually, I wrote a quote about that because I also, I, re- I was reading something, I think that was two weeks ago, and it made me realize that if you learn something but you just don't do anything like learning without action is a simple information but if you learn something and you put that into action that is transformation mm. because nothing will happen just like what you said nena because of too much information nowadays and i think one of the problems now nena is you don't know which one is actually the correct or accurate information <laughs> everything true. is there Everything is there. And, and again, uh, most people don't know what they want either. So they have so much information and no goals either. So you know, that, that's the thing. So act on something. Try something. Yes. See how it works out for you. And I think experiences will teach you more than just dead information that are not act on. Yes. And I believe nowadays more and more people are actually having that kind of thought of everything should be instant. Yes. Instant success. Like I so now for example you share the gratitude of journal and then that you know visualization before you go to bed. I think they do it one day, two days and they want instant success. Yes. It didn't work, right? It's not Correct. working for me. Yeah. Uh, it's instant gratification. I mean everything right now is You know, boom, email, messages, everything is now, now, now. Yes. And some things take time. You know, uh, people sometimes say, oh, wow. Uh, you know, let's say you've been thinking this way about yourself and your life for the last 15 years. You cannot expect to, to change your whole mindset and, and perception and beliefs in, you know, in 15 hours. <laughs> Yes. Even, you know, uh, it's, a, it's an ongoing process. And so you got to continually condition yourself every day. 
It takes because we, time. Because we, we are the sum total of what we do. Yes. We are the sum total of what you do. And the, the mind loves repetition when it comes to mindset. Repetition is, is something that really makes a difference. Agree. Really, really agree on that. Because you cannot just like do one thing and then instantly you want results in a very mm. short time. Because sometimes it even takes a long, long time. It does. You know, uh, the, the, every seed has its own appointed time, right? And some, you just don't know how it's going to be. Yes. That's... that's uh, Nena, I'm really enjoying this, but I have two more questions to yes. ask. <laughs> because you mentioned about you were a, a scuba Diver. instructor. Scuba diving yeah. instructor, correct. Scuba diving instructor before, and then be you became a coach. And I'm sure you've, you've done many things aside yes. from those things. If there's one decision that you've made in the past that really made an impact of who you are now, what is that decision? Or what was that decision? I think it's when I was 20, when I left for Australia. Um, I, you know, at, when I was 20, I decided to quit my job, sell my car, uh, and go to Australia. And my, my English was, was almost non-existent. Only right? French. I was most, I was, I speak Serbian and French because I also okay. speak Serbian, right? And my, my, uh, my English was maybe 15% at, at best. Really, 15. You know, 15. It was really bad. But I was in a point in my life where, you know, the job I had was, was, was bad. Uh, I, I wasn't enjoying it. I was waking up on Mondays, like unhappy, counting hours until Friday kind of thing. And I was, I was in a bad place. You know, I was unconfident. It was affecting me in every area of my life. And, I just applied for my visa. I got it, working holiday. And I just was like, oh my God, I'm going to Australia kind of thing. And three and a half weeks, three, four weeks before I had to fly, I broke my arm playing handball. I used to play a lot of handball, right? And that was a big you know, blow because the, the you know, doctor told me it's going to take six to eight weeks to fully heal. And here I had a, a flight to Australia on the side of the world in, in three to four weeks. <laughs> So it was, it was tough, but I, I don't know, something in me was telling me to go, even though it would have made sense to postpone for a month or two and heal it and get the strength back and it would have made life much easier. But I made the decision to keep my flight and go with a, with a broken arm. And I think that's the best decision because I don't know if I had stayed, maybe I would not have gone later on. Maybe I would have, you never know what would have happened, but I think it led me to sign up in an English school part-time for a few weeks, which I think was amazing for me. And that experience led to a lot of other things, which ultimately, you know, of course, brought me uh, where I am. So I think this is the greatest decision I made. Like there was a lot of uncertainty and fear. And I, I just went all in with you know, my broken English and my broken arm. And I made it. And, and uh, I think I'm very grateful to, to have decided that. At the age of 20? 20. 20. Wow. Yes. And it led you to, I'm sure, wonderful places, meeting wonderful people. Yes. And wonderful experiences. Yes. And, you know, it... it you, you know, I, wasn't, I didn't know what to expect in Australia. You know, I was planning to go for six months. I ended up staying two years. Uh, so that Did you know a, anyone in Australia when um, you went there? Nobody. Nobody. Oh, wow. Why Australia, Nena? I think it was just the, the other side of the, world, of the world, you know, kind of thing. Uh, and, you know, you, have, uh, you hear those things about Australia being, you know, wild countries and, you know, surfing and all those cool things. And, I, it just felt like this is the place to be kind of thing. So, you know, it, was, it wasn't a carefully planned, thought after decision kind of thing. It was very spontaneous. I think it came because like I was in a place in my life where anything could be better. You know, anything could be better. And uh, I think life, when you're ready, life always supports you. So we, we always have ideas, inspiration, intuitions, that very often we don't act on. 
And I think this was one on that I acted on and it led me to, to many, many amazing things. Wow, very nice. I'm sure you've learned a lot from that experience. Yes, for sure. Then at my last question. Yes. If someone, or maybe if you, if you're going to write your life as a book. <laughs> yes, bring it on. Okay. Yeah. What will be the book like and what will be the title? If I was uh, to write a book about my life or about life? Your life. About my life. If your life was a book, what would it be like and what would be the title? I think it would be a, it would be a great book. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. <laughs> um, I, think, I think it would be a book, uh, some, somewhat of a biography of some of those key moments that define me. Uh, the reflection behind those key moments, a lot of the philosophy of, of my life and life overall and uh, you know, what I believe about life, the universe and how we can create, how we can become conscious creators in our life. I think that's what the, the book would be. And, and maybe I would call it, um, that's a very <laughs> tough question. <laughs> uh, maybe I would simply call it uh, autobiography of uh, Nenal Popalik. Maybe <laughs> as uh, simple a, as that. A guide to uh, a guide to living your best life or a guide to becoming a conscious creator why not yeah why not of course not? It's, it's your life <laughs> sorry i thought that was my last question but because you said something <laughs> sure go ahead uh, you made me think of another question because you said live your best life how will you describe a life that we can say yes it's my best life. Uh, how would I describe it? I don't know what it is for people. I think, I think this is the, 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 it's a very important question because, again, it comes back to knowing what you want. You know, success is a big word uh, out there. You know, everybody is out there to become more successful and live a better life. But the idea that people are behind success is usually people you know, ideas they receive from other people, they receive from marketing, they receive from celebrities. Mm. It's a big car and a big watch and a beautiful girlfriend <laughs> and maybe a dog, yes. whatever, you know. So we receive ideas about what success is and then you see it and you're like, oh my God, I would be so happy uh, if I had that as well. But you never ask yourself, what is success for me? What would make me happy? What would it mean for me to live my best life? And I think that answer is con continuously changing over time. So what would life look like? I think you, to, to, live, to live a happy life, it would be that people living, you know, uh, they're living their own uh, definition of happiness and having a good life. I think that's the, the, the best answer for me anyway, because Because you could be climbing the wrong ladder your whole life and reach the top and be like, shit. <laughs> I took the wrong I ladder. I've been <laughs> climbing the wrong ladder. Yes. And asking yourself early on, you know, uh, what is happiness for me? What makes me happy? What kind of life I want? Who do I want to be? How do I want to treat others? What kind of relationship I want? What kind of body I want? We give you enough answers. Thank you very much. Thank you so, so much. I'm sure a lot of listeners want to reach out to you. How can they reach you, Nena? Your uh, Facebook or website? You can add me on Facebook, Nena Popadik. I'm on Instagram, uh, Nena Dinsfi. Uh, you can reach my website, nenadp.com. And my YouTube channel, Nena Popadik. So I'm pretty much everywhere. So you know, connect if you, uh, if you have any questions. Uh, feel free to to reach out as well and, and I'd be happy to, to have a chat. Thank you so much again. It's been wonderful and thank you very much for listening. If you like this episode, please share with your family and friends and until we see each other again on my next podcast, my next episode. Thank you so much for listening. 